Good. We are still continuing with the, uh, uh, our series of discussions in uh, these drugs called uh, works in the central nervous system. And today we are going to talk, talk about the antinogenic uh, brokers type of drugs. So uh, these drugs works in the autonomic nervous system, which we call the visual or the organs. We can also call it in the voluntary system. And also you can call it a, a vegetative system. <clears throat> they are widely distributed in our body and they regulate autonomic functions without consciousness and control. So some things happen without you yourself being aware. So uh, in the periphery of your body, that is the periphery nerve endings, we are, uh, that is where the heart, ganglia, plexus, uh, that innervates the heart, uh, the, the, the bladder vessel, the bladder, uh, the glands, and the other visceral and organs, and the smooth muscles of the body. So uh, in summary, you can see that the autonomic nervous is either uh, parasympathetic or sympathetic. And you can see that at every point, every level from the topest, the brain, to the lowest part of the spinal cord, you can see at what level each autonomic system is controlling our body. <clears throat> in summary, and also, you can see that at each every point of the body that you can have an injury and what can be affected uh, by that. For example, you can see the brain, you can see the, the medulla oblongata, you can see the spinal cord. So you can see that the eye is uh, at the point where the eye, you can see that on the parasympathetic system, uh, uh, the eye is uh, uh, constrict. Uh, then a uh, uh, sympathetic uh, system to assist in the rotation of the uh, people. Then you go up downwards, you see that at the level of medulla of Langata ganglion, you have uh, the stimulation of the uh, flow of saliva from the parasympathetic, then sympathetic inhibits salivary. So uh, one is the works against each other so that they can develop what is called check and balance in the body. Check and balance in the body. So you can see that parasympathetic, uh, below the uh, medulla of Rangata. So if you have an accident around the neck, oh. you can have a problem to the heart. So slow, slow uh, uh, the parasympathetic works on the string, uh, heartbeat, the vagus nerve, uh, constriction of the blockus, stimulation of the peristatis, uh, and the schizos in the GIT, stimulation and release of the bile. You can see the point. Then on the sympathetic system, you can see that the vertebra, that is the, 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 the what is uh, uh, the acceleration of heartbeats, the dilate of the bronchus, the levels, that is the thoracic region. Then uh, uh, down there between the rasic and solar plexus, you can see the inhibitor prestatus of the excretions. You can see again there the liver, control of glucose, uh, equilibrium, and also a excretion of the adrenaline and the adrenaline by the supralino glands, and also at the lowest point it controls the blood. So the blood, so you can see that at which level uh, every uh, sympathetic. It's working with controlling, uh, uh, controlling various part of the body. The others, parasympathetic, you can see that how it, what it increases and what it reduces uh, in the body. So uh, with that information in our mind, let us see work on these drugs called um, magic receptors antagonists. They block or decrease the effect of uh, sympathetic nervous system stimulation endogenous catecholamines and adrenergic drugs. So adrenergic receptor uh, brokers antagonist receptors action of epinephrine and the, the drugs. 
so uh, the antigenic neurons blocking agent act by interfering with the means of antigenic transmission and it work on the central sympathetics and ganglion blockers and chemical sympathetic. Uh, so the neurons blockage drugs uh, are uh, drugs like wornethanoid uh, act mainly by preventing release of melanin in our and the nerve endings. And the, the pharmacological is a sympathotectomy, and, and they are used in hypertension, they are used in glaucoma, they are used in the hepatic pain, and also even intramuscularly in the hypertensive uh, crisis, and also in severe like, drugs in cases. But remember, these drugs are not drugs are not resistant for turn and pregnancy, and also the state of producing uh, it's via hypertension in our country. So adverse effect of this drug is that they can cause severe postural uh, hypertension, they can cause diarrhea, they can cause renal impairment. They can cause renal impairment. Uh, so the other drug is betalem, bletrium, which can cause causes an easy release of noradrenaline and leading to blockage of adrenergic transmission by preventing noradrenaline release from adrenergic nerve endings. So they block potassium channel class three antidemetic activities. Uh, 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 anti activities. The other type of drug is gonadrenaline, which is a false neurotransmitter. It causes accumulated and stored and yeast like adrenaline. But it is inactive at the receptor. So, mode of action it replaces the neural adrenaline with an active, inactive or a transmitter. And the antipass effect it can cause hypotension, it can cause fatigue, it can cause last tune, and it can also cause sexual dysfunction, and also it can cause diarrhea. The other drug is rosapine, which inhibits vascular catacoramine transportation, and also it can cause dissolution in the ability to concentrate. And the advanced uh, reaction occasionally it can cause a, a psychotic depression and also can lead somebody to committing suicide because of taking this drug. So you have to be very careful when prescribing this lenosapine type of drug. So this antitrust is at a low doses in comparison with the neurotics for the treatment of hypertension. Hypertension. So the other drug is metharosine, it inhibits. Uh, 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 Thyroxin and proxcretion and the uh, antivirus uh, with no xylobendamine and other antigenic brokers for pyrochromocytoma treatment and the operative preparation for resection of pyrochromocytoma type of a uh, patient. In advanced cases, it can cause cystiuria in the urine, it can cause cystiuria in the urine, and this is can lead to uh, renal and uh, uh, calculites. So uh, the centrally acting uh, sympathetic product is like alpha methyl dopa, which works at convert, uh, which is converted to alpha methyl noradrenaline, which act on, uh, uh, which acts on alpha two receptor in the brain and causes inhibition of antibiotic discharge in the material. So it reduces peripheral ver um, uh, peripheral uh, venous uh, cyst. Uh, uh, resistance and also reduce blood pressure. Uh, so, a uh, various adverse effect of uh, cognitive impairment, uh, it can cause cognitive impairment and postural hypotension and a positive group test. And then uh, uh, it is only used the best drug to be used in pregnancy, one of the best drugs to be used in pregnancy. But you have to monitor it very carefully because it causes, um, it can cause systemic lupus erythematosis, it can cause um, uh, a thrombocytopenia, it can cause thrombocytopenia in men, it can cause increased uh, breast, uh, low libido, and also hoarseness of the voice. If it is so, and here this drug is preserved for the management of hypertension in pregnancy, a uh, type of related. Uh, and this otherwise. The other drug is colinidine, which is a imidazone derivative patio agonist of central uh, alpha 2 uh, uh, receptor, not frequently used now because of tolerance and it hypertension. The major problem with colinidine is that it can cause a very severe uh, hypertension after the drug, which can cause uh, a big, a big problem like stroke. So uh, if 
you have to prescribe this drug, you have to be ready to have that patient that follow that patient in the process of the group. The middle of this drug, you have to have tapering down so that it does not cause a, a big a problem with the drug. So uh, in summary, you can see that uh, at the generic receptors, this alpha one one is covered, the delta one is covered, and uh, uh, then we have analgesic receptors. Again, the classification of those drugs uh, during the period of time, but that is not relevant for us. What is relevant for us is that let us see summary of these drugs uh, briefly of these analgesic receptors. Uh, antagonists. Like, they are classified into two classes. That is alpha receptors antagonist and the beta receptor antagonist. In alpha receptor antagonist, we have three types of drugs. We have non-selective. Uh, yes, they work on alpha. They antagonize the alpha, but they are not selective to alpha 1 and alpha 2. Then we have selective alpha 1 and also selective alpha 2. The drugs which are non-selective are, are drugs like uh, uh, penoxerobezamine and pentolamine are non-selective. They are going to interfere with all areas with alpha. Uh, 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 broke all areas in the receptor, so you appreciate a lot of anti-cyan effect because they are not selective. Then uh, we have uh, drugs like um, uh, selective alpha-1 drugs, like prazosilin, like Terazolin, doxazolin, and alafosolin, tramusolin, and these uh, drugs uh, 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 like tramusolin is a good drug for management of a um, um, uh, good drug for management of uh, BPH, benign prostatic hyperplasia. Uh, uh, they work at that point. Then uh, endorapine, erapril, and brazapine, and the are um, that, uh, that is examples of alpha selective then alpha 2 selective is young binding and then uh, on the other side you come to beta receptor agonist the beta receptor agonist you have non-selective first generation we have beta selective that is second generation then we have non-selective third generation and then you have third generation beta selective type of Beta receptors. So we have nanondro, we have penibiotro, we have penindro, we have proplanol. Proplanol is a, a drug which is used in the uh, tachycardia in the heart conditions. Um, uh, that is a uh, hypertensive uh, heart disease. Timor, we have sotro, we have levotro, and uh, metro metoplanol. Uh, but remember, this drug is not uh, selective. Then we have second generation alpha, beta. Beta selective drugs like acetabutol, atenol. Atenol again is a drug used in hypertensive heart diseases, tachycardia, all those types of conditions are also used in thyroid hypertension division, and that is um, isolated, isolated systolic hypertension is also a, a drug like also is that one. Then uh, on the other side we have non-selective third generation drugs like. Uh, Lavetro, uh, Cavedro. Uh, uh, Cavedro is around 11 hours. Uh, it's around uh, less, less than six hours. In terms of, uh, it's a six hour drug, or yeah, some, it does not have a wrong life, life. But the good advantage with Cavedro is that binding to the protein is high. Uh, so, Lavetro is uh, a drug of choice in the hypertensive uh, uh, heart diseases. The market is sold as a neblong, 5 milligrams or 10 milligrams. Uh, uh, it has two ways of working, uh, which you are going to look at them. Uh, so it's a very good uh, drug. So uh, alpha 1, that is beta 2. Beta 1 selective, that generation we have. And uh, the the Vibora is the one which uh, we are saying that uh, it has two million of working, is a good drug, it's so need as a uh, Neblo. The Vetro is good for acute cases of hypertension and also in the management 
of hypertension. Later on, we'll discuss about the retro uh, protocols. We'll discuss about the retro protocols. Uh, so the alpha brokers, uh, let us look at the alpha brokers. Example is uh, Prazosin, which is well absorbed in GIT. The barrier rate is around 50 to 70%, and the peak concentration is within to one to that hours after all those LM. Initial dose is one gram, which are given at bedtime. So the best time to give this time is at night. A maximum effect in the recently of something on total of 20 milligrams in a patient with hypertension. Uh, this drug is used in hypertension, BPH, nightmares, and we did draw uh, in patient who has a P, uh, PTSD, patient who has a patient who has a, a scorpion, patient who has a scorpion bite. Eh? Who have a, a scorpion a bite and that one. So um so we have said that uh, it is used in uh, net mirrors as a withdraw uh, because of uh, what we call PTSD and PTSD uh, is a conditions uh, which is a mental condition uh, uh, when they post trauma. It's a post-trauma type of a condition of the brain disorder, a stress type of disorder, secondary to trauma. The drug is good for that one. So the side effect of this drug, it can cause other static hypertension, syncope, and nasal congestion. Uh, and nasal congestion. In our setup, this drug is not prescribed much. The other drug is um, Drazosin. Trazosin is less potent than uh, uh, Trazosin, but retains high specific of alpha-1 receptor. Bioavailability is high 90%, and half-life is 12 hours. Duration of action is 18 hours. More effective than uh, finestrin for VPH. Uh, Nowadays, Trazosin is combined with Trazosin for management of uh, MBPH. So interesting aspect of the action of trazosin and the disoxin of OBPs is that they induce a process in prostate uh, somatic cells. So initial first dose of one milligram is recommended and dose of 10 milligrams per day may be required for maximum effect in the benign prostatic yeah. hypertrophy. So uh, doxazoline is highly selective antagonist at the alpha 2 receptor. Half life is 20 hours, duration of action is being extended. That's six hours, be availability and extend metabolism is similar to prazosin. It's given initially as one milligram dose for hypertension and BPH. So this drug again we preserve it for BPH and in our setup. The other drug is uh, alfosorin, which is similar uh, uh, to alpha receptor subtype, by availability is 64 percent. Half life is that point, that six uh, uh, Minute yeah. uh, subfleet of SCYP3E4, concomitant administration of C inhibit is contraindication. So, uh, so uh, avoided in patient at risk for prolonged QT syndrome. It's avoided in patient at risk for prolonged QT syndrome. It's avoided in patient with QT uh, syndrome in a uh, uh, a, a patient who have uh, a prolonged QT in patients who have acute syndrome in um, ECG, uh, in ECG, patient who have a very long Q uh, syndrome in Q, they have uh, this type of uh, problem. So again, LM. Dosage is one milligrams. Dosage is one milligrams. Dosage is one milligrams. And, and it's one milligrams. Ten milligrams extended this tablet date broken after meal, cells taken after meal. This drug is used in treatment. Uh, in treatment of. BPS are not uh, uh, is not approved for hypertension. Then uh, we have uh, tamoxifen. Tamoxifen is a drug which is used for treatment of BPH uh, and a little effect on blood pressure. 
Si Vera absorbe durante 0.5 miligramos de los so the adverse effect is that there is marked post hypertension and syncopes in that patient after initial dose of prazosin. And so, so syncope also also have occurred with the high increased in dosing with the addition of second hypertensive with prazosin. So a uh, non-specific uh, side effect is the uh, Headache, dizziness, asthenia, and sometimes uh, because of treatment of prazolin. So the therapeutic use of these drug is that they use the treatment of hypertension and they, they improve rather than worsening the lipid profile and the glucose insulin metabolism who are at risk of developing atherosclerotic diseases. So they increase and glucose insulin metabolism and also uh, uh, lipid metabolism because they promote metabolism and uh, these type of patients who have hypertension. So that is the best indication for this type of patient. Again, these drugs are used in heart failure. Uh, 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 most commonly uh, what we call uh, we call uh, cardiac uh, hypertensive and um, hypertensive heart disease. Uh, alpha receptors and protagonists have been used in the treatment of congestive heart failure as uh, other primary accelerators due to the addition of both arteries and means reduction of the road after road which increases cardiac output and reduced pulmonary uh, congestion. So uh, when you look at the bladder, you can see that the various receptors in the bladder of a uh, human being you can see the masculinic receptors where they have, you know, the type of drug which works at that. Uh, 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 if you want to prescribe the way they work, uh, uh, M2s and selective and selective where they work, you can see where androgenic yeah. receptors work, alpha 1 and alpha 1 and alpha 13 and selective. They work on the wall of the blunder neck and also on the prostate. Then you can see that the alpha-5 release enzyme type 1 and type 2, the static blood outlet obstruction, that's when they have that problem because of the, 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 uh, the receptors are at the BPH. Then you can see the, the, the prospectus enzymes, they are on the, it's the best drug because it will work on the branda or it is going to work on the, on the prostate and again, it is going to work on the blood vessel. It's going to occur on the blood vessel. They are called postpone enzymes. So, a uh, benign uh, prostatic hyperplasia is uh, where you use a prazosin, uh, which reduces the resistance, and that one is good for that type of endocrinestrin. And the, uh, the endocrinestrin inhibits the testosterone to uh, this type of patient, uh, 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 and again, uh, a prostate. So they are good uh, given uh, this type of patient. Sometimes these drugs are combined, but they have a little effect on hypertension. So other disorders where these drugs are prescribed is like the variant angina versus hepatic disorders, increased ventricular arrhythmias induced by coronary uh, artery neuralizations or after hypertension in mammals. It's also used in mitral or hemolytic valvular uh, insufficient. So an uh, alpha-2 receptor antagonist like herbin is a competitive agonist, antagonist and maybe may benefit some patient with psychogenic erectile dysfunctions. Psychogenic erectile dysfunctions useful for diabetic neuropathy and in the treatment of postural hypertension. Approved in veterinary medicine for the vaso of Zadine anesthesia. anesthesia. So, non selective uh, and uh, alpha and antagonists like penoxbezamine and penaromine. These drugs are not very common and in our setup, they are not very common in our setup, but postural hypertension is a prominent feature which can precipitate cardiac arrhythmias when you use this type of drugs. So the therapeutic uses of this drug is they are used in a pichromocytoma. Pichromocytoma is a big cancer, which is a big problem, it causes hypertension. Uh, so uh, it controls explosion of severe hypertension and minimizes adverse effect of catacoramines. Mm -hmm. 
the dose is 40 to 120 milligrams even for independent doses and the use of a treatment of hypertensive crisis following a withdrawal of clonidine. You remember that you say that clonidine can cause uh, can cause um, what we call a uh, withdrawal uh, or rebound hypertension. Uh, uh, the bond hypertension, so that is uh, then uh, how these drugs are used. So, a uh, direct intravascular injection of penolamine uh, combination with papervine for male sexual dysfunction, but we cause prostatic hypertension and therapies. So, FDA approved use of the uh, pentolamine to reverse certain reduction of salt, uh, salt tissue anesthesia. And penoxamine has been used as of level to control the manifestation of autonomic hyperreflexia in patients with spinal cord transection. The toxicity and antibodies of this drug is that they can cause hypotension, they can cause tachycardia, cardiac arrhythmias, ischemic cardiac event, and also including myocardial infarction. They can inhibit a uh, reversible inhibition of ejaculation, and uh, the pentalamine should be used with caution patients with history of uh, peptic as uh, uh, disease. So, uh, other drugs which are uh, adrenergic receptors antagonists alpha, like agatomene acronyms like indolamine, selective competitive alpha 1. They are used in treatment of hypertension, uh, BPH, and also prophylaxis of migraine. An example is um, erotamine. They reduce blood pressure, minimal tachycardia, and they reduce incidence of attack of Lenon's uh, phenomena. Lenon's phenomena is a spasm of the X2 of the peripovisors. So, kentasaline is also another drug which involves alpha receptors. And example, uh, another one is Zilapil, and so a novel selective alpha receptor antagonist, and the role in the treatment of hypertension is being to be determined. Dazolin is so another one, is, is an alpha selective antagonist, which means hypertension, and the epileptic is another, is a, one of the, of the effects of this drug. So that is all about alpha uh, receptors, let us look at beta uh, at beta uh, receptors. The beta receptors are going to be understood by the foreign properties relative affinity for beta 1 and beta 2 receptors. So they are, and again, they are also dependent in terms of generation. They are also dependent in terms of uh, intrinsic spatomimetic activities, difference in Deepening solubility and capacity to induce vasodilatation and pharmacokinetics uh, parameters. So you can see that uh, these drugs and their mode of action, you look at them, you see that the drug, membrane stabilizing activity, intrinsic agonist activity, lipid solubility, extent absorption, oral variability, and plasma applied and protein binding. So depending on what you want with these drugs is the one uh, you use this table to determine what you want. So for example, you want a drug with the, the best membrane stabilizing uh, uh, effect. The best one is a uh, uh, proplanol. And uh, if you need a drug with intrinsic agonist activities, the best is proplanol again. So if you need a drug with lipid solubility, with lipid uh, solubility, if lipid the uh, solubility, uh, the best one uh, with the I is the drug like penetribular, which is not kind of used. Propranol is the one which is used in our setup. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can see the drug with extent of uh, extent of absorption, extent of absorption. The best drug is a. Uh, the best drug is a penutro, penutro, and this is not a very common drug in our setup. So our common drug is like propranol, which is more than ninety, and uh, also another drug which is common in our setup is a ten or ninety and sixty is there, and also. Yeah, metoplo, which is not common in our setup. So oral availability, if you want a drug with oral availability in our setup, drug with oral availability, which is, that is a tenor with 50 to 60 percent. So, and also that percent of propron, so a tenor is working there on a, a, a plasma half-life, the drugs in our setup. 
where like you can see that uh, propano with five for the best then a 10 or six to seven six to seven then a uh, protein binding you can see that in uh, propano as tainted then uh, you can see that um, a 10 or a six to 18 uh, binding to plus propano so that is depending on what you want. So the most common thing people like in this type of drug is half uh, uh, <clears throat> These are uh, 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 more of the uh, 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 absorption in half life protein by doing uh, other drugs like you see that uh, uh, Cabedro, when it's protein rate, they eat half life is going to eat. Then uh, it's, uh, so it has to be at the reverse. Then uh, the Pueblo, it depends on that day, is good. It's a good drug, it can be taken once per day. And the Pueblo, the Pueblo can be taken once per day. So that is how this drug you have to consider them and and when you are selecting uh, drugs. Now, there are particular use of this drug is that uh, cardiovascular diseases uh, use this one in treatment of hypertension, angina pectoris, or acute coronary syndrome, or congestive cardiac failure. And uh, uh, that is the time you need this type of uh, a drug. Use them in myocardial infections, uh, like many tails of beta receptors antagonists and mistan during the hardest piece of my acute myocardial infections continue long term reduce mortality by 25 percent and then a pectoris act by reducing cardiac work and the oxygen consumption and the oxygen consumption contraindication in variant angina congestive heart failure uh, congestive uh, heart failure uh, recent controlled uh, trials so that um, beta receptor antagonists are highly effective for patients with all grain of heart failure. So, secondary to left ventricular systolic dysfunction. So, use of beta antagonists, uh, uh, propano in hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy is uh, also used in this one in a particular stigma cardiomyopathy and also agenda and competitions are the sync up with patients with this disorder. So pyochromocytoma, the best drug is also this type of drug and also the patient with acute dissecting aortic aneurysm. So they are also used in uh, glaucoma like uh, opening uh, open uh, uh, angle glaucoma using drug like the vitro, metriclone, and the taxol and the taxol and the vinyl similar that fun drug are used in the uh, treatment of uh, glaucoma. The other is that uh, propanol and timoral and metoprolol are effective for prophylaxis for migraine. So propanol effective in controlling acute symptoms in individuals who are acquired performing public or in allies at the public institution. So it's a good uh, drug. Uh, so propanol, sensio, drug, uh, uh, somebody in the treatment of patients are going with the draw from alcohol or those with actesia. So propranol and non alcohol are efficacious in the primary prevention of blood cell bleeding in patients with photo hypertension. So an effect, effect uh, uh, in the cardiovascular system is that uh, beta receptor antagonist may induce congestive heart failure in susceptible patients and rare bleeding blood can blood arrhythmias. And the symptoms of peripheral vascular uh, disease in the ozone. Uh, the ozone. Abrupt discontinuation of the receptors antagonist after long use may cause exacerbation and then and this is of a sudden death. So uh, again, in promoted functions, they can cause rapid breathing, uh, like airway resistance. In CNS, they can cause fatigue, sleeping disturbances, uh, depression in the metabolic. They can cause hypoglycemia. And in miscellaneous, they can cause sexual and dysfunctions and pregnancy. Uh, they can, uh, and drug interaction is that aluminum salt and cholesterol and cholesterol may decrease the absorption of beta blockers. Penitent, the pampicin and penobarbital smoking induces a hepatic transformation enzyme, leading to decreased plasma concentration in the antagonists like propanol. Uh, 
Simetidine and Androsaline may be used by a variety of interests as profanol and beta pronoun by affecting aquatic growth. So, overdose of this drug, they can cause hypertension. They can cause bradycardia, prolonged uh, atrioventricular production timing, and the wind end QRS complexes are a very common manifestation of overdose in this type of uh, conditions. So, a uh, non selective uh, beta antigenic antagonist like propranol is used in treatment of hypertension and angina, and usually give up those of 4 to 20 milligrams per day. It is used in treatment of supraventricular arrhythmias and the ventricular arrhythmias, and digitalis induced type of the arrhythmias and by chronic infection, and also by chromocytoma in the essence of trauma and the practice of migraine. So Nanodro is also a, a good drug, but it's not very common in our setup. Timoro is not a very common in our setup. Pindoro is not very common uh, in our uh, prescriptions. Uh, so the most common is beta-1 receptor and genetic receptors antagonists like Atenero. It's a very anthropic, also used in gravis diseases, that is the thyroid gland, and also in each is 50 milligrams, one day, and it used to earn, and also the CNS. Same effect and other beta blockers and there's no restriction in treatment uh, of these conditions. Other drugs is like Esimoro, Esimoro and Betaxoro. These drugs are not very common in our setup, uh, except that the, 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 the except that um, Esimoro is has been recommended by American at Association uh, or American College College for the treatment a patient or who have on beta blockers, but can be a patient and the compensated at the patient who use the tomorrow. So betaxone is used most commonly in the eyes for the to reduce the uh, 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 reduced uh, uh, molecular pressure. Acetabido is not very common. Just in our setup, and also the software is not commonly used in our, uh, in our uh, setup. So the third generation uh, beta brokers like um, nitric oxide product, like the most common one here is in the Vibro. The Vibro uh, is the one which is used in our setup, Cavendro and oxidant activity. Uh, Cavendro, then uh, Lavetro. Lavetro is used in maternity and also is also used in the emergencies. So uh, these are the most common drugs. So in this one, um, and the Vivoro, the Vetro, the Vendro are the most common drugs which uh, have um, interest in our region. So uh, the Vetro is uh, alpha-1 and uh, selective beta blockers. It reduces blood pressure by reducing uh, 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 SV percentage via at one blockade and calcium beta 2 antagonist activity. It reduces heart rate by activating reflex candy via B blockage and it can change cardiac output. It can cause post hypertension. Visto is not very common in our setup. Cabendro is highly used. It's an uh, antioxidant and anti inflammatory property. And it produces vasodilatations. It has been approved for hypertension, heart failure, left ventricular dysfunction following myocardial infection, and it also improves ventricular functions and reduces mortality and morbidity in the severe uh, congested heart uh, failure. Uh, Celiplo is not commonly used in our setup. The Mublo is another good drug which is highly selective. No uh, non donor uh, was a dilatation potential. Uh, so it has very unique mode of action that it works on uh, D, the vibro, and the uh, alpha and the vibro, where it is uh, the IRS selective to beta antagonist, where it causes reduced heart rate and increases the stroke volume. On endothelio, a nitrous oxide mediated vasodilatation, it causes sustained vasodilatation reduced uh, particular vascular uh, turn. Systems. So, uh, tissue organs 
own study of this grant is that these are the studies which has been and going on to study of this uh, drugs like uh, uh, alpha one receptor and alpha two receptor antagonist. So uh, in the conclusion is that beta brokers, general metoplo, propano, law, they are good drugs for love. So thank you very much for listening to this lecture. Uh, I think now you will be able to prescribe this therapy. Thank you very much. <laughs>